Hello and welcome to another Hero Quest video. Today I'm painting the doors and the open doors or archways for the main game. As you can see, I have primed them white. The first color I'm going to use is a cultist's cloak. And it's from the Army Painter Speed Paints 2.0 range. I'm also going to add a lot of medium to this paint because I want it to flow into all the recesses and the stonework, leaving it with a stone effect. I'm painting all this lot in one go and I suggest you do the same simply gets, our, gets us through the models and lets us get on to the more important miniatures in the game which are of course the good guys and bad guys which I'm really looking forward to starting next even on the closed doors you don't need to be super neat when you're using this paint just make sure you have heavily diluted it either with water or the speed paint medium Preferably the medium, although you can use water. You want this paint to act almost like a wash, but you do want it to have a bit more control and be a little thicker than a wash if you can. That's all five doors done and now I'm on to the open doors. These are much easier. Don't need to worry at all about hitting anything other than the miniature, just cover the entire miniature with this grey colour. As you can see I've used some blue tack or double sided tape on paint pots and I'm using these as paint handles. You can buy commercially available paint handles but especially for a project like this you would need 15 so just don't do it use a paint pot use whatever you've got use a cork use whatever you can stick a piece of blue tack or a piece of double sided tape to now i'm going to use my astronomicon gray as it's a very light gray and i'm going to be heavily dry brushing all these pieces with this gray paint don't worry about getting this exact colour, just get a, a light grey. If you don't have a light grey, get some black and white and mix up a light grey. At the end of the day, as long as it's lighter than the colour that you used for the stone effect, it'll do the job. Again, this is time consuming because we'll have so many pieces to do, but you can be as heavy handed as you like with the dry brush. As long as you wipe most of the paint off, you can't make a mistake here. Just keep dry brushing until you get the desired effect. Now I'm going to use white and use whatever white you've got. I'm going to use the dead white from model color Vallejo and that's because it's what I have handy. I'm using it to touch up the doors that I've hit with the gray. And the reason I'm touching the doors up is that I want the wood colour that I'm going to use to be consistent throughout without having dark patches and light patches that you would get if you left parts of the door white and parts of the door grey. You want it all to be white or grey to paint over a white surface because especially with these contrast type paints they give a better colour, in my opinion. I'm just taking my time, making sure that I get a, a decent even coverage on the closed doors.
Now for broadsword silver, and I'm going to use this for the hinge. Again, I'm going to be as careful as I can, but I can go back in with the white if I make mistakes and touch it up again. Don't want to do that if you can help it, so try and be as neat as you can. But if you make mistakes, it's not the end of the world. We can fix it quite easily. These speed paints flow really well, but if you're not careful, they can flow too well. So just be careful, load your brush, and because you're painting small areas, just be careful. That's all I can say. Next colour up I'm going to use is Hoplite Gold and I'm going to use it just to paint the door handles and that's really just to add another colour. You could quite easily have painted the door handles with the broadsword silver or whichever metal colour you choose. I'm going to choose this gold colour because I think it just it stands out. It pops a little bit on the doors. Now to start painting the doors, the first one I'm going to and I'm going to use it neat and I'm going to see what it looks like. I quite like this colour, I'm not going to do all the doors this colour. I'm going to do them all multicoloured either. They're going to be various browns. So the next door up is going to be Satchel Brown. And I'm going to use it neat. It is quite dark. So I'll only do one door with this colour. And because I'm using these paints straight from the pot without thinning them, watering them down or adding medium, they are very controllable. They'll go where you want them to. Once you start to thin them down, they do have a tendency to flow where you don't want them to. You thin things as and when you need to. Next door up is Desolate Brown. I really like this colour. And you'll see this door looks way different to the others. But in my opinion it still looks really nice. Again using this paint neat straight from the pot. So it flows really easily. Flows well. You can avoid hitting the areas that you don't want to hit quite easily. So for the last two doors, I'm back to Satchel Brown, only this time I'm mixing it 50-50 with Speed Paint Medium. And that is to give it a lighter tone. You'll see here yourself that it's somewhere between the Ruddy Fur door and the Satchel Brown door. These next two doors are two of my favourites. Because this paint has been thinned, it does tend to flow a little more, so just be wary of that. Take your time. Remember, during this part of the process, we're not in a hurry. We're just trying to get things done as neatly as we can.
Now, I noticed some genius in the sculpting department decided to give every single one of these doors open and closed vines around the outside of the stonework. I don't know why. I don't know what dungeon would have greenery growing in it, but apparently they do. So I'm going to use some white paint and I'm going to paint the vines in. Just roughly. You don't need to be very neat here. Just get a half decent brush with a half decent point and thin your white a little bit and paint in the vines. We're going to be going over the top of this colour, this white colour, with other colours. So you don't need to worry too much about being too neat. Now for the first lot of vines I'm going to paint, I'm going to use Desolate Brown. It's kind of a greeny brown colour and it's suitable for these miniatures, for this task of painting vines in my opinion. You could have painted them a lot brighter, but I don't want them to be too bright. At the end of the day we're supposed to be in a dungeon. Although I like the desolate brown colour for the vines, I'm going to mix it up a bit. I'm going to paint the vines with three different browns. The ruddy fur, the satchel brown and the desolate brown. Just so that the doorways look a bit different. Just a matter of painting over the top of the white that you've already done. If it flows a bit over the stonework it doesn't really matter, it just looks like greenery, shrubbery, plant material. That's them all painted. Now after you've let them dry for a good couple of hours, come back and varnish. I highly recommend that you varnish these, especially these, because the plastic trays that they're stored in grip them quite tightly. And if you do paint them and you don't varnish them, the paint will rub off. Maybe not initially, but it will definitely rub off. Therefore, I suggest you varnish. You can use a spray varnish, you can use a gloss varnish if you wish, although you'll get the gloss effect obviously. Although you can use a gloss varnish for toughness and then go over the top of the gloss varnish with a matte varnish. I think I've said the word varnish enough, so you get the idea anyway. And that's it, job done, models complete. Once they've had a good 24 hours to dry completely, they'll go into their box, ready for the first game. Next up for me is gonna be the miniatures. I'm gonna decide which ones I wanna paint first, and you guys will be the first to see it. I do appreciate very much the fact that you've watched at least this far. Maybe you've skipped straight to this part, which is absolutely fine by me. I would ask that you hit the subscribe button, it'll help me out in the long run and you will get to see the next in the series which is going to be probably some of the bad guys, I haven't decided which yet but that should be up in the next few days. Thank you for watching.